Hello everyone, Tech 1421 here. Happy Easter everyone. On this Easter Sunday, I have a, a nice game with Cottontail Teemo. I thought it'd be kind of cool to get a Cottontail Teemo gameplay for everyone. And the gameplay isn't really the important part of this commentary, this, this video that I'm gonna be putting out for everyone uh, today. I have a kind of a cool topic that I hope you will enjoy. I put a little bit of time into it, a little bit of time and effort into recalling some of my favorite Easter eggs that I've seen and done in the past and to do with video games. So I have a list of 10 Easter eggs. They're not in any particular order. I don't want to, I guess, make one Easter egg uh, better than another or certain Easter egg because I think they're all special in in their own sense. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get on to the list. So the first one that I want to talk about is Skyrim. And I have actually two little Easter eggs and they're, they're two different Easter eggs, but they're my favorite two from the game that I really enjoyed. Now Skyrim did a really, really nice job uh, with, I guess, with their whole Easter egg thing. They put a lot of Easter eggs into the game and it was kind of easy to do this with, uh, with Skyrim because you could name different guns, certain things you could, you know, there, the map was so giant there's so many different missions that just little things that people said uh could go a long way in, in ways of you know map design and all that stuff uh, you they could really do a lot with that so they did a really nice job i think and my favorite easter egg from skyrim was the notched pickaxe and i thought that was a really cool easter egg that they did it was a really nice tribute to minecraft and during that time minecraft was really on the rise of gaining a ton of popularity i think they got to like you know one million users during that time when skyrim was out so it was a huge tribute to them and i'm glad they did it i thought it was a really nice thing uh, the other one uh, me being a pac-man fan was you could actually see a pac-man it was like carved out of cheese and it was really cool um in one of the houses in in one of the towns i, I don't really know the town's name and all that stuff, but I'm sure that people that have played Skyrim or have at least you know watched or looked at playthroughs or whatever um, probably know what I'm talking about. It's a really cool Easter egg. They had Pac-Man there, and that's pretty much all I want to say about that. But Skyrim, really awesome game for Easter eggs. So there's tons of them, and those are my two favorite ones from the game. The next one that I want to talk about is Halo. Now, a few Halo ones because I think Halo like Skyrim, did, did an amazing job with Easter eggs. Throughout all their games, they had a lot of Easter eggs from just kind of other games. Like, I guess in like Halo Reach, they um, had little flashbacks from other, you know, like other games like Halo 3 or Halo 2 and stuff like that. And they did a really nice job with that as well as they, they, put, they put a lot of effort into a lot of their Easter eggs that I thought was, was really cool. So the first one, and the first one kind of is a broad category but the whole skulls that they had in the game uh earlier in in halo 2 and i'm not sure about halo 1 but halo 2 at least um they had the whole skull system where you had to find the skulls and also in halo 3 you had to find the skulls and then certain things would happen uh and then in later games they they kind of made it so that you can turn them on and off but uh previously i believe you had to actually like find them and uh, you can only really get the benefits of them um, in that particular level that you had. So uh, my favorite skull that you can find in the game was the grunt birthday. Um, and it was basically whenever you shot a grunt in the head with, with like your gun, um, their head would explode and it would make like a hooray <laughs> kind of thing. So that was my favorite Easter egg as far as the skulls go in Halo. Uh, so I just think I thought it was pretty awesome and really, really nice thing that they did with the game. The next thing with Halo is uh, in Halo Reach, and there was this, actually this near one of the end of the end of the game. There was a really cool tribute room that they put together, where they had lots of uh, you know a tribute to a lot of different people in the community and the YouTube community and stuff that uh, meant a lot for them. And it just kind of showed you know how I guess how much the community meant to uh, the Halo franchise. So. It was just really nice to see they had a bunch of like different clips of different like videos and stuff and they had uh different like they had like red versus blue and they talked about that but there's a ton of like intel in one little room and it was kind of a really far hidden thing in the game it was hard to get to and but if you got to it which i did one time 
and got to see all the stuff in the room. It was just really nice for them to do, and I thought you know it deserved to be on my list of my favorite Easter eggs in, in video games. Uh, the next one uh, also has to do with Halo, and this is the last Halo one on my list, is the Scarab gun. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's in Halo 2, and you have to fly like a Banshee to get there. It's really far away. It's hard to get to. Uh, but if you get to it, it's it's the coolest gun ever. It's a rapid. It was a rapid-fire plasma rifle that didn't overheat, and you could just, just fire it constantly. And it was basically like having a ray gun at all times, and, and like like a ray gun like from you know Call of Duty, uh, that wouldn't you know overheat, and you have to reload or anything, so it just would go crazy. It was only in one level, and it was just awesome to to play with. I played with it once, and it was just crazy. Uh, I don't think they had an achievement for it, unfortunately. It was really like a secret kind of thing, and I don't even know how someone figured it out, but. They did, and it was really cool. Uh, the next one, uh, going over to Call of Duty now, and there's not too many Call of Duty ones that I have. I think there's only two that I have on my list here, but uh, the first one has to do with uh, a similar kind of concept as the Scarab gun, and that's playing with the ray gun in the campaign of World at War. Uh, there's this one level where you had to be on the beaches, and you had to do like a certain thing on the beach. I forget exactly what it was. Uh, but you did the, like this code, and you followed a certain thing that you had to do. And if you did it right, you the ray gun just appeared, and you could use the ray gun for the rest of the level. And I don't think it had any ammo on it or anything like that. Uh, so it was really, really awesome, and I was really enjoyed playing with the ray gun in the campaign mode because that's definitely one of my favorite guns of of any game was the ray gun from Zombies. And speaking of Zombies, next up on my list is has to do with Zombies and just Call of Duty in general. They had some kind of obsession with teddy bears and zombies. I don't know what it was, but if you ever played any of the zombie maps, you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, in a lot of the zombie maps, they had just random teddy bears just anywhere that they wanted to put teddy bears. And sometimes they were really freaky, and sometimes they would be also in the campaign. They'd just be like randomly like on signs, or they'd be doing some kind of pose that was really messed up and creepy. Uh, but that's Call of Duty for you. They, you know... They had some kind of weird sense of humor with teddy bears and zombies, but my favorite thing with that was in Dare Rise. Um, they had like a whole setup where if you like you shot a teddy bear, it would appear somewhere else, and there's a whole like thing that you had to do with the teddy bears, and and if you did it right, then um, there'd be some cool like uh, you know they they would they would talk and stuff. I don't know exactly know how to explain it, but it's a really cool Easter egg if you've ever played Dare Rise. Um, I, I definitely recommend. There's there's some really cool Easter eggs on that map for sure. Some really cool achievements too that they put in the game. Um, but the teddy bears were probably my favorite and kind of funny to look back on and joke about. Uh, next one has to do with has nothing to do with like guns or swords or anything. That's Super Mario 64. Uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64, obviously. And the, one of the coolest, I guess. Uh, Easter eggs that they had was seeing Yoshi on the rooftops after you got 120 stars, you shot out of the cannon and we'll go on to the certain part of the castle and Yoshi was just there and he, you know, it was basically uh, Nintendo's way of saying congratulations, thanks for playing our awesome game um, and, you know, here's Yoshi for you and, and I think Yoshi gives you like 100 lives or something like that, which isn't that necessary at all uh, but he does it anyways and then he just kind of goes off into the distance and waits for you to you know, partake in other adventures and other games and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's that's Super Mario 64, one of my favorite uh, Easter eggs there. The next one on the list is The Simpsons Hidden Run. Now, this isn't necessarily an Easter egg per se, but I, I still think it deserves to be in that kind of category of defined as an Easter egg. And what this was in, is in every single level of uh, Simpsons Hidden Run, they had these secret cars, and and they were different references to different parts of different episodes of the of uh, of the Simpsons, and some of them were just awesome. Some of the cars were awesome. Some of them were really terrible, but I just thought it was it was so cool to drive around in these particular cars, like the the Batmobile and and stuff like that, and Mr. Burns like car, and and all this really really cool stuff. And there's like mini cars and. It was really cool. There's a, there a bunch of levels. It's one of my favorite games as well of, um, of all time. So uh, had some really, really cool Easter eggs in that game. 
Next up on my list, and this is actually one of the last ones, if not the last one on my list here, is Portal 2. Now, Portal 2 was an amazing campaign. If you have not played the Portal 2 campaign, I definitely recommend playing it because it is such an awesome campaign. You have to play the first one, the, the Portal 1 first, and then play Portal 2, but it's, it's a really cool game. And if you take the time to really enjoy the game, get all the achievements, it's, it's such a fun game to play. And one of my favorite Easter eggs, upon many Easter eggs in that game, my favorite Easter egg is to see Peabody sneaking around in one of the episodes, in, in one of the levels. Uh, Peabody is one of the... Uh, one of the characters you can play as in the se in the second in the two-player mode. So uh, it was kind of cool how they linked that together, and I just think that was really awesome how they kind of linked the the multiplayer with the single-player campaign, uh, which was really cool. The last one on my list here that I forgot to mention is Bioshock 2. Bioshock again, a really amazing campaign. Bioshock 1 and Bioshock 2. I've not been able to complete Bioshock Infinite yet, but I will eventually. Uh, but Bioshock 2, really cool campaign, just like Bioshock 1. And in Bioshock 2, there's actually a particular level where you can see the main character Jack's plane that actually crashed, and that's how he got there in the first place. So I was I thought that was really neat how you can actually see his plane and stuff like that. And then there's also different parts of the level if you if you're really careful and you, you see it, you can actually see Jack's face. So uh, really cool Easter eggs. I think that, that that game, that campaign is just crazy. We have a lot of cool games in my mind on this list here, but um, we are actually come to an end of my list. I do hope you enjoyed all the Easter eggs. I hope you have a fantastic Easter. Let me know in the comments section down below what your favorite Easter egg in any video game is of all time. I definitely want to uh, know uh, what your favorite Easter egg is because I love Easter eggs. I think they're really cool. I, I love when you know different games implement them into their their games. And uh, so yeah. So anyways, we we win this game. Uh, it was a pretty fun game. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy Easter, and I'll see everyone later. Peace.